Yeah, so welcome everyone. Um, really cool to be here. And uh, well, let's dive right into it. Um, investing in big data is easy, but using it effectively is hard. And I think that we heard this already quite a few times today, so I think it is really, really hard. Um, but also, a lot of companies are thinking about this. Uh, and well, we, together with Go Data Driven, work together to develop uh, a few steps in which we think it's really handy to think about when you're developing your data strategy and when you're well, developing your data path in your own organization. Uh, and that's what we're here to tell today. So let's show it. So we're going to give you a, a guide, basically, a step-by-step -step, uh, way to incorporate uh, uh, the data uh, maturity path into your company and we're going to go to each phase. We don't have much time. Uh, Giovanni was also kind to put a timer there. So we're going to do it in maximum speed possible. If you have any questions, any concerns, any doubts, or you want to connect with us, we'll be here for the next couple of days and also after the session. So be sure to, to talk to us, to ask us questions uh, in hindsight. Maybe fill in the Q&A in the app. Oh, yeah. We're also checking that one. So also feel, feel free to do that. Good to just, yeah. Uh, let's, uh. So yeah. Um, Who are you? Can yes. you tell a little bit more about yourself? <laughs> thank, thank you. Yes. So so my name is indeed uh, Sasha Roggeveen. Uh, I'm a part of uh, Bull.com as the head of data analytics, working there for seven and a half years now, being involved by setting up the data science department and uh, many of the different algorithms the website use. In a minute, we will also introduce Bull.com as a company because we are aware it's not so famous here as it is in uh, in the Benelux, basically. But uh, more on more on that later. And Melissa, how are you? Oh, so nice that you asked us, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I think Giovanni, you already introduced uh, us quite well, but uh, yeah, I'm Melissa Pedotti. I sound, my name sounds Italian, but I'm really Dutch. Uh, and I'm a product manager in a customer happiness data lab. And basically that means that every customer feedback that we have in forms of text, that's what we get in, in our data lab. And we try to do magic. Well, not really magic, you know it, right? But uh, uh, smart stuff with it to really know what the customer is saying and uh, to give it back to the organization and to our partners. Uh, so that's uh, in a nutshell what I'm doing. Um, but before we go into the golden path, we need a little bit of interactivity from you guys because it's already late in the afternoon and yeah. We need to have some exercise, I think, today. Um, and Steven already did a poll, but we will do it old, old school. And we have one question for you guys. And that is, before we dive into what Bol.com is, Bol.com has over 12 million customers. You can stand up if you think yes. You stay, can stay down if you think no. Ah, that's nice. Okay, so more more than half, I think, seventy percent or so, Sasha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got yeah, thinks yes. Days. Okay, well. And, and, and what is the answer? What's the answer? It's yes. I will tell you a little bit, but it's yes. Most of you guys are correct. Um, maybe one extra question. Who knows Bol.com? Can I see some hands? Well, also a couple of you guys, so that's okay. I think there are some Dutchies or Belgians in the room then. <laughs> um, but Pop.com started in 1999. It's, uh, uh, originally, it comes from Germany. It is a bookshop from back in the days. Um, and they wanted to go online because the bubble was there. And they thought, oh, online, it's there. Um, but then the bubble burst it, yeah, that's the right word. Uh, and actually the only online uh, page which was left was bol.com slash nl, because bol nl already existed. Um, and they started here, really big company as you can see. In 2010, so already 10 years later, well, we went quite successful and we went uh, outdoors, so we went also to Belgium. And in 2011, we became not an e-tailer anymore because that's, of course, what we did. We sold books and also during all those years, we sold more than books and we really sold a lot of stuff. I think toys was the second part, uh, music, all ki that kind of stuff. And at 2011, I think we almost sold yeah, every product you can buy uh, outside food. Um, and then we decided that 
not only us as an e-tailer could sell stuff, but also that we can become a platform and also let other partners in who sell, sell stuff as well. Then Ahold Del has about us, which is also a really big organization in the Netherlands, some brands here. At this moment, we have more than 47,000 yeah, 47, partners who are selling on our platform. So in the Netherlands, it's also quite big. We have more than 34 million products, around 30 million customers, and at the moment, we have around 4,000 employees. So that's a little bit of context that yeah, we're telling this story. And last but not least, maybe it's also good to be aware, Amazon is quite small in the Netherlands. So Bob.com is really the biggest uh, platform. And one in two people who are buying stuff online do that in Bob.com every time. And this is how it looks like. We also have a French page because Belgians also speak French. So I put the French page up front. <laughs> but let's dive into the golden path. We have another poll for you. So we say that every strategic decision should be backed by a data analysis. If you agree with that, please stand up. If you don't agree with that, sit down. I wouldn't have expected differently from this audience on this. Uh, well, some people are still sitting there. There were some people still sitting. <laughs> I would be tempted to go and ask, no, like, oh, why, what's why, going why, on? What but we don't have really done that time. We really need to speed up yeah. this talk oh, because yeah. we have so much content to go through. So, so, so let's dive into it. Yeah, so that's the topic data strategy. This is all about data strategy. And data strategy starts at the top of the company. And I also did a poll here in the, in the, in the, in the shop, and I, I saw on the app application, and I saw that there are very little executives actually in this, uh, in this summit, and which I find super interesting is like, how can we also engage that audience on this, uh, on the, in these stages? So how do we get also the bosses around here to see what's going on in data land? Because I believe that data, it all starts at the data strategy, and we need to be able to understand what's needed in the complete organization on the strategy level. Because we see nowadays that actually beta, data analysis is becoming a bottleneck in decision making. Um, in the last couple of years, or actually the last decades, the amount of data collected by companies has really exploded exponentially. There is so much data available for every one of us to, uh, that it is almost impossible for the analyst available to analyze the amount of data to help strategic leaders to make the best possible decisions based on facts. And which means that we have uh, need more and more analysts in the organization to do so, but they're not available. They're not there in the market. We don't have enough data professionals at the moment to serve all those companies with making the best possible decision. So there's only one solution there. We need to scale it up. We need to do it smarter. We do need to do it with less people, not work harder, but work smarter together. And this is part, should be part of the data strategy in the, in the, in the basis. If we want to become, and I'm happy Stephen already went through this graph so we can go quickly to it, we really have to follow this, uh, this, uh, this path, this data maturity path to become an AI-driven organization. And let's get, just keep it on continuing and keep the tempo high. <laughs> um, and one of the biggest challenges I see is that actually, especially analysts, especially the data professionals, are too, just too busy with the urgent work to invest into scaling it up. So, we see that there is kind of like a black hole of effort. Everybody is diving into all this urgent work, all this urgent work that needs to be done on data straight away. Uh, all these questions being asked by executive strategic leaders, sometimes operational uh, people, sometimes product leaders. They're coming all around from the organization. People want to know what are the facts, what is the data, what is the latest uh, uh, happening in the market. Which means that these people are not able to invest into working smarter in getting the tools right. And this is, uh, this is something we see that it's important that each phase that we go to into company, if we have our uh, data strategy right, we make sure that step by step, every part of this, and it's not, it's not like a complete linear curve, it depends really how you are in the organization at the different topics, how are your people and skills, how is your tools and technology, how is your data, executive support, and see what's needed to get it to the next step. And that is the uh, uh, yeah, inventorization you need to make to uh, proceed in your, uh, in your data strategy. 
So we'd like to also summarize every part up with some clear guidelines, some clear action points that you can do straight away, just to not keep it talking about flying cars and the future of AI and everything deep around, but also things that you can actually do tomorrow, that you can actually say to your company, like, listen, we need this kind of stuff. And one of these things I feel like is just no data means no decision. You need to back up decisions by data. You need to have the analysis ready to understand why you made the decision and you need to write it down. That, that makes it reproducible and shareable by everyone and supported. Otherwise, you will keep, get those questions later anyway. Check if the data people, uh, if you have the data people at the strategic level. So are there in the positions of your strategic decision making, are there the data leaders available? Do the people have the skills to actually know what is needed to execute upon your data strategy? Um, and PR about data, I really think that's something that data is not good, uh, data professionals are not so good in. They're not, they're so busy with their, their tooling and, and, and their work that they forget to talk about it. Here to each other, we love to talk about it. But do you do, do, you do the same in a company? Do you give a talk? Do you share? Do you, do you show what you've been doing? And do you keep people engaged and also think about like, how can I reach to my audience that's not technical, that doesn't speak data? That's something that I feel like we really need to scale up. And furthermore, in Check for your company. In which phase are you? Where are you at? What, 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 and what is needed to get to the next phase? What do you need to push the most? And I think the data maturity framework really helps with that. Yeah, definitely. Going to the next one, again, a question. Storing data in an other continent will cause problems. Yes, please stand up. No, stay down. Well, I think uh, for, I would say the answer is uh, definitely yes. Uh, and that's because we need to think about data governance nowadays. I think it was always an issue, uh, but I think now it's more important than ever. Um, also, most often not the most favorite part of, uh, of talks and often also skipped, but I think just to have an emphasis on it, it's really important uh, because uh, data governance is not a nice to have anymore. It's really a must. We have stuff, it's called GDPR. Uh, and you really need to um, yeah, keep data private if people want that. So it's really important not to mess around with data and misuse it. And I think because organizations have so many data nowadays, it becomes more and more difficult to decide, hey, is, is this private information, yes or no? So data governance is really, really necessary in organizations. Uh, at this moment, we have an example for Bol.com. We're working quite hard on it, uh, uh, well, these weeks actually. Um, and I really like that as a data user in my organization because, well, if I want to find out which data I want to use and who is responsible for what kind of data, uh, now it's really hard to find. But with the data get catalog and all these steps that we're now going through, it really helps me as, well, data user in my organization, our partners who are working as well with our data, uh, but as well uh, customers, because they're way more safe than they, well, maybe they don't know which data we are using, but we know it and we have it all figured out. Um, so yeah, summarizing it, it's really important to have your data governance to think about it after you decided on your data strategy. And it will become more and more important over the years. We will see that legislation is on data and, uh, and implications will be bigger and stronger uh, imposed on us. So get your data governance straight. It's not, uh, not uh, nice to have anymore. It's really a must. Another one. Weather reporters are also part of the analytics field. Yes, please stand up. No, please sit down. Uh, no, yeah, <laughs> Stephen is not, yeah. <laughs> Stephen doesn't agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were talking about data skills, of course. So like, what, what does make a, a data professional? What, is, what, what are analytical skills? What is needed? So let's dive into it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, basically we, we try to make uh, a nice overview about the data production. Uh, of course, you can think about a lot of different steps, but just for the example, I think these are good steps. And we have two planets here. So uh, the data role planet and the AI role planet, they're all in the same galaxy, but of course they're thinking a little bit differently. But still, let's try to plot them. And we have our various roles. In the data roles, we have the data analyst, who's more 
towards the information usage. Then we have the analytics engineer uh, and the data engineer. And on the AI roles, we found the analytics translator, the data scientist, and the machine learning engineer. And don't forget the user role, so we have found a new planet here. Uh, the project uh, lead and the leadership, and we are talking a little bit more about those later on in the presentation. Um, first, we're going to emphasize the analytics engineer and the analytics translator. Yeah, two new kids on the block, basically. We see that there are, uh, with the increasing of the data field, we see that the resolution of data roles also becomes higher, and we need, we're getting into the need of different roles. And one of the roles I'm, I'm, I'm really enthusiastic about is uh, the analytics engineer. The analytics engineer is, uh, uh, the technical part, basically, of analytics is really moving the analytics of field towards more like the software engineering principles, making sure that you have versioning, code reviews, uh, you you, you sure that your CI/CD is in order. So all the best practices of software engineering, you apply them to your analytics. Um, but in combination with also some domain knowledge, which hasn't been there before. You have usually the data engineer who just gets the raw data on your data platform whatsoever. But what is the interpretation of the data? What's the context? How do you make it in such a way that actually your data consumer is able to easily get that information and use it for its, for its use case? That's something the analytics engineer can really help you with, that, that interpretation layer. And I've seen, the, I've hired the first analytics engineer, engineers and uh, you already see the scalability of analytics and the data work is enormously increasing. I definitely agree with that. Going to the analytics translator, uh, I uh, was one, uh, the first one in our organization. And uh, yeah, I think it is a really important role and really useful. Uh, basically what it is, is that um, you are helping your domain or your part of the organization seeing what data can do for your part of the domain. Uh, so it's really important to have this role. It's a role, so it's not per se a function. It could also be that a product owner who has a lot of ideas about uh, data science uh, that can also have the analytics translate later role. Uh, but because a lot of product owners in our organization didn't have that knowledge, we took the chance uh, to have, well, me <laughs> there, uh, to think along and to actually also educate the rest of the domain. And what we basically say is that, uh, well, you really need to have domain knowledge. So you really need to understand the business. But besides that, you also need to translate those business needs and those wishes uh, into data solutions. So do we need data analysis? Do we need data science? Can we automate it? What does it mean? Can we maybe start rule-based or do we need to have a black box model? Does that work? You really can need to think about, well, the two sides of things. Um, of course, experimentation is really important to also think about how to do that. Um, and your goals need to be upfront. So it's not about how cool you can do NLP models. We're doing that, it's really cool. But it's not only about that, uh, it's also why are we doing that? Where's the value in that? How can we measure it? Uh, what's the end product? Uh, what are the in-between metrics maybe to see? Um, yeah, you really need to understand what's necessary because you all also need to understand what kind of data roles are needed. So yeah, we, we see that these roles really can put in a crucial part of the organization. We also uh, know that it might not be that you have the headcount to hire those people, but be at least assured that there are people looking into this field already in your organization, that these capabilities that are now more wanted are uh, already getting there or that they have the ability to to, to uh, push that up uh, a notch. Um, yeah, I think also think about all the roles that you need to get something going. The time where we only hire data scientists is really over. We need to complete package to get to a full data solution. So really understand like all the aspects uh, and got, get them covered. Um, and that makes also sure that the training and development programs, yes, they, they just have to be in place. They, you have to understand what's needed to get all these people to the next level and they have to be constantly moving. They also need to be challenged to get better and to be uh, stay engaged at your company. Yeah. And hiring standards for recruitment, they usually move up 
when you understand what's needed uh, for the rules and the people at your, at your uh, company getting better, they also will uh, have higher demands for people joining. You should move with that and also align with recruitment. These are the people we need. Ah, nice question. Another one. So. Data lake or data warehouse? Stand up for the data lake, sit down for the data warehouse. What do you prefer? What do you believe in? Is there someone who wants to say something else? No, no One mesh. Data mesh. <laughs> data lake house. Data lake house, also a possibility. Also exists, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so many of these things. Now we're talking about data tools and data stack, basically. What do you use in your organization? And we believe that uh, in the last couple of years, the landscape of data tools has tremendously changed for the better. That was, of course, started by, by the cloud transitioning and everything that happened around it. It, it, it opened up new possibilities uh, that weren't there before. So we see this at the, as, at, as a modern data platform where actually you have tons of super nice open source tools that you can just use. Uh, immediately and you don't have to build for yourself uh, and it also means that your data tool is not only about having this one platform that rules them all again you need different tools and connect them there's an ecosystem going on here and uh, I believe that for instance this yeah and the ecosystem is way <laughs> bigger and I'm, I'm getting excited over this because I, I really love to see how this data landscape is expanding so massively and I know next year we can we can't pl plot it on a uh, on, a, on, a, on a slide anymore. It's just too much. It's getting so big. But this just shows how expanding the data field basically is at the moment. And <laughs> I, can, I can already assure you it's all, uh, only going faster and faster and faster. So I always like to say to all you data professional guys, there will be enough work for you all for a long, 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 long time. But and we, we really want to explain all of them yeah, today here. But one. unfortunately, <laughs> Giovanni put the timer on. So <laughs> that's so. not possible anymore. <laughs> It's Giovanni's fault, basically. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, yeah, and maybe one point to mention uh, about choosing it, right? Or maybe we can say that there. Yeah, so, so I, I like also to say, like, prefer, go for certain preferences. Ch choose your tools. I already saw it in the presentation before. Like, have a preferred tool, go for a tool, and, and believe in it. But also keep challenging it a bit. I sometimes see it a bit like you have this beehive, like the group in your in your in your that that is enthusiastic about what you use, and they constantly keep up, keep up to date what's there in the data field because it's expanding. And it might be that the that the silver bullet is just like one new company away. We have to keep up to date what's there out of the market and challenge what you currently have. But once you stick to a tool and you make it easy to use, because that will actually help uh, your organization to, to speed up uh, there and other people to use it as well. But as a path of least resistance, not, not by force. I don't believe in like forcing people into, yeah, you should use this tool. That's not, uh, that's not how things should go. Keep it, keep it open. Yeah, and I think also the involvement of users is really something to mention extra here is like, you're, you have, you're running data products, you're running a data platform, making sure that you know how people use your data platform, keep up to date and, and use feedback with them. Like, how are you using it? Is it, is it, is it uh, running your demands basically in the right way? So can we, uh, uh, yeah, can we improve it in such way? Use feedback all the time to, to make sure that you get the flywheel basically going. Data consumers really can help you to improve the way you produce data as well. I see that we have like six minutes left, so we I think we this. need to speed up. So uh, I, I will skip this. You can stand up, but I will skip this uh, to talk about data literacy. And this is really important for us. Yeah, so, so what I believe is, is, is um, as being an employer with power, the power of data, the power of facts, the power of, you can observe the field in, a, in, in, in the way it is, right, with the data. You have a superpower. And sometimes I see it's hard to give it away because you are like this one-eyed king. Uh, the, the, the king in, in well, how do you call it again? Like uh, in the blind land, uh, in the land of the blinds, you're the one-eyed who is the king, basically. That's how you call it. And we <laughs> see that the data professional is one of those. And it's sometimes hard because, you know, you're the guy that makes all the decisions and people go to and want to know more about. But giving this away to all the people in the organization is going to empower truly your organization with the power of data and give the superpower that you have 
also to others, and that makes your organization basically uh, a group of, uh, of, of, of super, uh, super power, superheroes. Super indeed. <laughs> yeah, and we just saw this screen, right? That uh, the product leads and, uh, and leadership, they are at the end of the data pipeline, uh, and they are the ones who are using it. But it's really important that you're going to think about shifting that data business boundary. It's really important that your uh, users can access data better, can understand data better. And it's up for the data experts to think about how to improve and easy your KPIs, your data, your uh, not only your dashboards, but of course as well your dashboards. Um, maybe more people need to learn how to do some SQL. They also learned Excel, right? It's maybe a little bit scary, but you need to do it. Uh, and I think that, well, if you show this also to your organization, like, hey, we need to shift it. Come on, think, uh, think about this. Uh, it really will help. And I think one point of it is really to um, show what you are doing. So, again, the PR of your data. And, well, this exclamation mark uh, is also here because then your business owners can also think about, hey, I want this. What kind of data do I need? So that's also, I think, a big benefit if you're doing this. Maybe we can skip this because the data products is nice to end with. Yeah, let's, let's continue. Yeah, so a uh, very nice uh, summary of <laughs> what I just said. That's this. Maybe, maybe just, just one really like the um, communication plan. How do you think about how you communicate to your data audience and make sure that you constantly keep them up to date what's happening in data land. If you have an analysis for somebody, don't share it only with that person. There might be another one in the organization needing exactly those facts or getting inspired by those data points and asking for another question or popping up an idea that's really good. I've seen that quite a lot. Just push it out to the entire organization, not only to the one that asked the question. Good one. Last but not least, the data products. So yeah, this is the end of the golden path. So all the steps you did before, of course. Uh, and this is thinking about the value. We already mentioned it a bit. And it's of course also, yeah, everyone probably here thinking, yeah, duh, but a lot of people are not doing it. So you also want to say here, really start thinking about, hey, what is our main KPI? What do we want to achieve? What is really important? And then think back. Uh, and well, I have an example to, uh, to use to explain it to you from my team. So uh, my team is called Customer Happiness Team, and we are responsible of well, getting all the customer feedback out of the organization, structure it in a way that the organization can use it. Uh, and uh, well, our main KPI is customer happiness, and we measure that with the Net Promoter Score, which is really, really not the best KPI, but there is a lot of information in it which we can use, so it's really important. And what we did here is that we thought, oh, we need data science, and we hired two data scientists, and that was it. No people around it. They didn't know what to do. Uh, and after a year, they went away. So that sucked. But then we thought about, hey, we need a strategy. <laughs> the first step in the golden path. And then I came as an analytics translator to think about this and what we really need. What do we want to achieve? What is data? How can we use it? How can we use data science? Uh, and that's how we start thinking about it. So, uh, well, we not started at the creation, but we started at the other way. Uh, and now we are, well, I think quite a big group of people are thinking about the, the customer feedback. We have some software and data engineers who are creating the data and define it. Uh, then in the yellow part, it's my team, uh, they're really focusing on the data aspect. So they're doing a lot of um, uh, uh, NLP models, they're using hugging face for it. Hello, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's, really, it's a really nice tool to actually make the models. But we also hired three data analysts last year because we also really need to understand what our data is about and just really high over, like what, what are the customers saying? Can we categorize it? Can we show it to the rest of the organization? And last but not least, we also need a lot of project leads who are going into the organization, tel telling our partners what to do with that information. So that, for instance, if customers are saying a lot uh, of stuff about uh, the payment system, which is not working, where are you, Etienne? <laughs> uh, then, well, we need to let the payment team know uh, that, that that's going on and they need to improve their systems. And that's where we need the project leads besides also automating our services. So yeah, what can you do about this tomorrow? 
what we see is also look at what are you achieving with your product basically. Write it down and make it a goal function. OKRs re are really suited for it, also do it every quarter. It's the story of your project, it's what you want to achieve step by step and making it actionable and clear uh, creates good alignment within the, uh, the product. And I think I really believe in like make the hypothesis tree and also start experimentation over this hypothesis tree and deal with all those questions one by one to find out how to create value, what's up, well, how it's happening. But you start always at the value part. And collecting data, I, I cannot emphasize it enough, make it part of the job. Uh, I'm a bit done with the, with the statement, uh, garbage in, garbage out. I heard a lot, it's like, okay, <laughs> search for the gold then. Not, not, not only focus on this, this, this garbage part, we all say the garbage in, okay, what, what do you need basically to get your model up and running? Let's search for it, let's see how we can retrieve it instead of like keeping working with this garbage. So it's part of the job, we have to do that together as a data team. Yeah, and I also think is that if you put all that data knowledge in your team and also talk about it with each other, uh, then also, well, what you just saw in my team, we are really learning from each other what we're doing. We have that OKR and we, yeah, I think we're optimizing uh, this step uh, because of that. And to finalize the last one, because I also re really like that, if you achieve your goals, make sure that it is a rememberable moment in time for your whole team, for everybody around it. Make, the, make a goal achievable, attainable, but if you really achieve it with each other and you get there, it should be uh, celebrated in a really like excessive way almost, just to get whole, it's such a good team event and such a good way of bonding over to celebrate to, towards reaching your goals as a company. And I really believe that also as a data team, you should drive that basically. This is where we're aiming for, let's go for it, and if we make it, let's do something crazy together because you really will, will get the culture of data-driven working in the complete company by that way. And don't forget about retention, that also works. <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. it, you're at the golden path. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks to Melissa and Sasha, I really like this celebrating the exuberance and uh, I tried to get me invited to the one of these next events. Uh, well, but given the time, I think we have time for two questions from the audience. Everybody Every, there? Everything clear, guys. <laughs> so I do have a question then about these events. Uh, what was the latest, uh, latest event that were celebrated with exuberance and what, what kind of milestone have you reached because of that? Oh, we, we're, we're actually not there yet, but what we did <laughs> is the, the next quarter. Then we, yeah, yeah. Well, there is one story where we actually said like, okay, at the moment we are reaching the OKR at a certain level. It's like everybody gets a bottle of champagne until the point that you say like, okay, let's do a cocktail workshop with the entire company. I don't know why it's always about booze, but I think uh, celebrating <laughs> has to do something with booze. Anyways, but that was, that was really a reason also for the tease, like, okay, we want this cocktail workshop together because that's a, that's a, that's a crazy way of, uh, of, of celebrating our goals and it really worked, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks Sasha, thanks Melissa, let's thank them again.